Hi everyone, Ben Gartland here again. Today's demo is going to be how to configure a WR41 V2 as a mobile data connection and a Wi-Fi access point router. So in effect you have a, a Wi-Fi access point that you can use anywhere as long as it's a, uh, a power source and mobile network coverage, you'll be fine. Right, so we've got the WR41 V2, it's got a, a blank configuration at the moment. Um, the only thing that I've configured so far um, is the Ethernet interface has a um, IP address through a DHCP service, so it's configured as a DHCP client, that's the way you can see it's got 192.168.0.38 um, and also there is a, a SIM inserted. So we have a look at the uh, graphics output, we can see here that the SIM1 is flashing to say that that's uh, actually inserted in the active SIM, we can see the SIM's there but there's, there's no net LED lit up. Um, so we can see here also that there's only Ethernet zero configured and there's there's no mobile data connection up. <clears throat> right, the first thing we're going to do, I recommend you do this on um, every new router, is configure the user. The default username is username and password. Um, for security's sake, um, always make sure you do set something different especially if it's going on to a public IP address, which um, a lot of the, the SIMs from around the world do give out. They give out public IP addresses rather than private, like we normally get in the UK. So, um, oh, so insecure. I've just used demo and demo for the username and password, but um, I'll just log out and log in. <clears throat> so we can see that's working up here. You can see the username is demo. Right, so the first thing we'll do is um, we'll get on and configure the mobile data connection so that that uh, is up and running. So configuration network into mobile. We can see here that this configuration is going to be for SIM1. Into the mobile settings. Um, now some modules do have built-in APNs. That's the access point name. Um, the, the service and the module that um, we're going to be connecting to isn't going to be using one of the the pre-configured settings. So the APN um, that I'm going to be connecting to is btmobile.bt.com. <clears throat> if you need a SIM pin, if the SIM has a pin configured, then you can put those in. Um, if the APN also needs a username and password, you can put those in there as well. So that's quite straightforward. Um, NAT wants to be enabled on the cellular interface only. Note that um, you always apply NAT on the on the outbound interface, so we can apply that, and that is the default setting. Right, so that's the the mobile interface configured. Um, we'll give that a moment, and we'll see the the mobile interface come up and be active on the mobile network. So while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll get on with the rest of the configuration. So the next thing we're going to do is configure the um, Wi-Fi. <clears throat> now you can configure the, the Wi-Fi to be bridged to Ethernet Zero. Um, however, I don't recommend that because then you end up um, with all your wired and wireless clients or hosts um, on the same Ethernet interface which probably isn't ideal. It makes a bit more sense to split them up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a logical interface and where possible always recommend that you do use a logical interface for configuring um, the Wi-Fi access point. So let's give it a description. Wi-Fi bridged interface and we're going to give it an address 192 dot one six eight dot one hundred dot one so it's outside of the the range that we've currently got configured <clears throat> we'll leave the the mask as uh, 24 bit mask that's fine we don't need to configure any of these um, so we'll hit apply and the router now has this IP address and subnet mask configured on the Ethernet interface so what we'll do now is we'll come down and we'll also set up a DHCP server. <clears throat> now each interface has its own DHCP server so we're going to 
logical Ethernet interfaces, DHCP server for Ethernet 1, enable that, and say what addresses we want to assign. So we'll go from 192.168.100.2 to 63. Uh, we don't need a massive amount of addresses on this interface. And there's only going to be uh, a few clients connecting to it. Mask, this is what you're going to push out to the um, Wi-Fi devices that connect to the router. So this is the configuration of the DHCP server. Um, the gateway is going to be the IP address of Ethernet 1. The DNS server is also going to be the IP address of Ethernet 1. If you like, you can put in a secondary DNS server and the least time, seeing as, it, seeing as it's an access point, um, I'll just set it to one day. If you had multiple DHCP servers, you can make this one um, a lower priority by configuring a, a time delay before it sends out a DHCP offer reply. But one thing we do want to do here is only send these DHCP offers to Wi-Fi clients. Seeing as the uh, this Ethernet interface is going to be <clears throat> used for the Wi-Fi clients only. So there we go, that's the, the DHCP configuration set up. So then we'll come back into the, the Wi-Fi, have a look at the global Wi-Fi settings into the countries, pick the country. Now this configures the correct channels that you can use and the power output. Remote management, this is a really useful one. <clears throat> if you don't want the Wi-Fi clients or the, the hosts connecting to the router on its Wi-Fi connection, if you don't want them to be able to manage the router, um, on over the Wi-Fi connection, then you can come down here and you can say disable management. So that's a very useful option to do. Probably recommend that you do that. Um, for the moment, we're going to leave that disabled. Select the, the network mode. We'll go for BGN because I know we're going to have a mix of devices and channel auto. Um, I'm going to set this to six because I know that's a clear channel where I am. Um, right then, um, into the, let's just apply that. Next thing we'll do is we'll go into the Wi-Fi node zero and we'll enable the interface. Description, we'll call it my AP. The SSID, <clears throat> set that to whatever you want to call the access point. So I'm going to set that to WR41V2 it's an access point and we're going to change this here so it's bridged to Ethernet 1 so this is the logical interface that the Wi-Fi node will be bridged to um, if you want to enable the station isolation so that there's no chatter between um, Wi-Fi clients then then you can enable that so what we need to do now is enable some sort of security so we're going to go for WPA2 with pre-shared key. If you've got access to a radius server, you can also configure those with the 802.1x versions. We'll set the <clears throat> pre-shared key, WPA pre-shared key settings to AES encryption, and then we'll just configure a pre-shared key. I'm just simply putting in test, 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 and then hit apply. And that should be all there is to it. <clears throat> so let's save that configuration and hit save. In fact, I've just realized I don't have an antenna, a, <clears throat> a mobile data antenna connected to WR41. I just temporarily paused the video while I connected the antennas and now we're just waiting for the mobile interface to come up. There we go, so then the net LED has come on. That means that there's now a, a mobile data connection. If we just refresh this home, scroll down a bit here, we can see now that the PPP1, which is the mobile one interface, has a 
IP address. Right, if we go to execute command, we should be able to ping out ping 8.8.8.8 and we'll send 10 pings. When we hit execute, we'll see that the pings are sent. The first couple do take a little bit longer than normal to reply, but we do get reply, so all good. So let's have a look on the laptop, make sure we can see the, the access point. Okay, so there it is, and let's connect to it. Uh, you know what? I've already connected to this once with a different pre-shared key. <clears throat> so let's just change this, and we'll put in test, test, test. <clears throat> And then let's try again. There we go. So we are 41v2 connected. So now if I disconnect the laptop's Ethernet connection <clears throat> and come up here, um, let's just do an IP config first of all. <clears throat> and then scroll up. So we can see here that the IP address assigned to the laptop 192.168.100.2, which is out of the DHCP pool. The default gateway is the router, which is dot one. So if we do ping 8.8.8.8, .8 there we go. We've got a reply, and we can tell that due to the uh, due to the round trip time we can see that that is going out on the mobile connection so that's um, that's a lot slower than it would be on on the DSL connection right so let's just pop up here and we'll also make sure we can access the router's web interface we can demo demo login <clears throat> let's just launch the graphics applet Okay, right then. So now if we run a, a constant ping, now you can see that the, the DAT LED is flashing to show that there's data going out on the mobile interface. Um, and just to prove that we've got um, a connection, if we come here into network status, Wi-Fi, we can see that the, the module is up. We're on channel 6. Um, if we refresh this, we'll see that the, the bytes received and sent increases. We can see the uh, the Wi-Fi client that's actually attached. And then if we come into mobile, we can also see here the, the cellular data connection information. So there we go. We've now got a router that we can take anywhere. Um, as long as there's a power source and there's um, mobile network coverage, we've got ourselves a Wi-Fi access point. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.